of our mind, all of our strength. You are God, the only God. In you we trust, and in you we love, and praise, and adore, and honor. In your sons, then we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, it's good to be back in the church and back at the in the pulpit. Some of you maybe weren't here last week, but uh, Vicky and I were gone. Have been gone this week for a few days and enjoyed a vacation. So I'm grateful to Gary Davis for preaching the word uh, last week. Uh, his message on um, replacing your worry with worship is it's a good listen. If you uh, weren't here and uh, have not, I would strongly encourage you to go and uh, go to our website, click on our YouTube button, and that'll get you to that site. And with those couple of clicks, you'll be right there to be able to uh, watch and or listen uh, to that message, um, a, a powerful word. Um, from Philippians chapter 4, what was interesting is uh, the last time I preached was the last Sunday in January, and that week leading up to that, I was studying Philippians 4, preparing a message that I thought was for that Sunday, only for the Lord to say, no, I want you to do this, and, and uh, so we went a different direction. And then to hear him uh, speak on that topic, a uh, little different than, than what the Lord was stirring in me, but, but yet similar in ways, and so i really still planning on preaching from that passage, uh, just because the Lord continues to stir it in my heart. Um, and uh, to, to think on and reflect on that passage of Scripture, uh, but that'll be for some time in, in the future. Uh, but I'm grateful for uh, guys like uh, Gary that can come and preach for the week before when Mark uh, preached the word for us on our men's day, and uh, just another message that if you weren't here on that Sunday to go and, and listen to that uh, and be challenged from God's word, just... Um, it's just reminding us that it is not so much the messenger as it is the message and his word. That's, that's where it comes from. And I'm grateful that God's called me to do what I do and, and that I get to do this. Um, but I am just one among many uh, that God uses to uh, preach his word. Uh, so I'm grateful for that. Let me, let me ask you a few questions. You guys know I like to ask questions. Can, can you read the sign there in the baptistry? Can somebody tell me what that says? Simplify. That's, that's kind of easy because it's there. Now, can anybody tell me how long that sign has been right there? Vicki, you can't answer. How long? A couple of years? Five or six years? 2011? Eight years? Yeah. January 22nd, 2012. I preached a series of messages that dealt with that topic of simplify. The stage was cluttered, not with, this isn't clutter, all right? Well, may, I meant for some of me, but we had living room furniture. We had, we had the stage just, just messed up. I mean, similar to the way our living room looks now. Hold that thought. I will get back to why it looks that way, okay? But, and just shared with us, eight years ago, that one of the challenges that I think we will continue to face, this is looking back at those notes, is, is the challenge to simplify our lives. Busyness, life happens. And we get wound up and caught up in it, and, and before we know, we, 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 don't, we don't simplify, it doesn't even come close to def describing our life. Because there's not a restful moment in it. There's something to be done here and we've got to go there. And so busyness definitely marks our lives. Sometimes that busyness is really good busyness. 
I mean, it's, it's doing good things, right? It's, it's serving the church. It's doing things with our family. It's, it's all of those things. But it's, but it's busyness. And it just, what, what tends to happen is all of that busyness blurs our sight to where we lose focus of what should be great among us. What should be the most important among us. And it happens in our physical life. It happens in our lives, but it happens in in our spiritual lives. It happens in our church life. And so this idea of simplify, that we wouldn't be tied to the things of this world. That's that's the thought that I want us to, to begin to think about, is that this simplifying is that we wouldn't allow the stuff of our life, that we would be tied so much to that, that it would dictate what we have to do and how we go about doing those things. But that we would consider simplifying as a decluttering and a refocusing that we would declutter and refocus. There's been a lot of communication and talking and things going on in, in, our, in the Yarbrough household for the last several months of just about life situations and, and finances and, and just, just everything, all right? Caitlin, y'all know that Brianna's married and, you know, old married person now, been married for a year, moved out of the house, all that kind of stuff. But Caitlin graduated in December, and just a couple of months before she graduated, or at least that's when she first started mentioning it to Dad, she she was getting this urge and this desire to move out and and to spread her wings and to get her own place and and, and to live on her own. And so as graduation came in December and we began to look and talk about finances and all those kind of things, it just you could just begin to sense in her spirit and all that she's ready. And, and so we began to get excited about that. I mean, partly that's the empty nest that everybody talks about, you know, uh, for Vicki and I. But anyway, long story short, Kate's found herself an apartment. She'll be moving out in a couple of weeks. How many, her phone has a countdown going on, um, just a move-in day. But, and honestly, honestly, Vicki and I are, are excited for that. I mean, we just believe that that's God's direction right now that it's, it's time for her to do that. Not because we're ready to get rid of her, but because she just, in her spirit and in her life and what's going on, just in all of those conversations, we just sense that it's time, and, and it's a great time for her to do that. So we're excited about where she's moving to and the apartment she's found and all the decorations that are coming in. I mean, all the stuff, you know, Amazon's been to our house 22 times in the last week, maybe, maybe 10 yesterday, I'm not sure. I think they delivered late last night. But I just... But she's excited, and so her excitement spills over. We're excited. It's, it's a new phase for her, something different. And, and, and along those same lines, Vicki and I have been doing a lot of looking. If, if you didn't know, about six months ago, I had a milestone birthday. That mid-century mark, you know, I mean, that, that one. And depending on which door you came in today, or if you pay attention anyway, my wife is celebrating a, a milestone birthday today. And, um, and so we have, we have reached, an, a, and just looking over our lives and just, just thinking about what's, what's, what's God doing? What does he want us to do with the second half of our life? What's, where, how does that look? And, and this, this word of, of simplify just began to, to pop up for us. And so, not to alarm anybody or not to, we just to put to rest any, any we're, we're in the process of putting our house on the market to sell our home and to simplify. It, it's not a church move, it's a personal move. And so as folks drive by and begin to see stuff moving out and all that, it's, there's, there's nothing, but you, you just need to know that so that you can help because I know how people are and all that stuff will happen. But we just, there's an excitement for us about what we're doing. And so we, we have a living room right now that looks like, you know, has just happened in there. 
because we've got these piles going on and boxes here and boxes there of, because we brought a realtor in. And we had a realtor come look at our house and say, we wanted to know what do we need to do to get it ready to put on the market, what might be the, the, the marketable value of our house, you know, all those things that you kind of need to know and, and that kind of process. And so they gave us a list. And the very first thing that this realtor said when they, when they came in was, you need to depersonalize and declutter your home. Well, we took offense to that right away. <laughs> Not really. But I'm, I'm, I'm telling you that when God tells us to depersonalize and declutter, we take offense at that. We, we struggle with the fact that God would tell us that it's not about us and it's not about our stuff. It's about Him. Depersonalize and declutter. You need to get rid of this and stop doing that and start doing this so that you can do what I want you to do. We, we, we bow up at those things spiritually. But for us, we knew that. I mean, some of you all have been in our home and, and you know that we like to decorate. And I mean, Christmas is not still up, but Christmas is replaced with everything that was up before Christmas went up. And, and so we, we've begun that process and we have this... this three different categories that things are going in. It's either going to the new place, it's going to storage for the future new place. I mean, you know, part of our planning and all that, but going into storage, or it's going to be sold or given away. And then we've kind of come across the fourth category, trash. <laughs> Stuff that just needs to go, right? But that's, that's what we're doing. And so in that process, we are decluttering, and so... The, the stuff's coming off the walls, the things are coming out of the kitchen cabinets, the closets, all of that stuff. And you're realizing after eight years of what you've accumulated, you know, and what you haven't used, and it's just those kind of choices. So that's, that's what we're doing. If you want to talk more to us about our process and what we're doing, we'll talk to you individually. But, but we, more than anything, I just, and it, and it lined up with where I wanted to speak today, but just to let you know that that's coming and... There's nothing more to it than just the Yarbrough family making some personal choices as to how Simplify looks in our life. Because we're sitting there and, and we, we work hard and we, we do this and we do that and it's taken everything that we do in order to have that place and the life that we live now. And is that what God wants for us? And in the stopping and the reflecting and thinking about that, God says there's more than that for you. And this is a way for, it, for you to get there. So that's what we're doing. I believe in the same fashion God's doing that work in my life individually and as the pastor of this church to say there are some things that we're doing that maybe need to go into some categories... <laughs> Keep doing what you're doing. Store that away for a, a later time and get rid of and sell that. And then maybe there's some stuff that just needs to be gone for good in my spiritual life and in the life of the church as well. Because I, I do believe that there is a correlation in that thought of decluttering and refocusing in our personal life that, that ought to happen in our spiritual life as well. It's, it's a... Re renewing there's a scripture that says seek ye first all the stuff of this world and God will no wait uh, seek ye first the kingdom of God and all of these things these things are food and drink and clothing shelter all of those things will be taken care of but we've got to get the focus back. We've got to get the priorities back to where they need to be. Because my stuff can either own me or I can own my stuff. My, my stuff can either dictate what I have to do in order to keep that stuff or I can realize that that stuff is really God's stuff and I'm just a manager of it and I can seek Him for what He wants me to do with it and then walk in that pattern. And so we're just making some of those some of those choices. 
and decisions. And it's exciting. There's, there's a sense in our household that, that as wild as some of the things are that the Lord's tossing around in our heads and what we're going to... We don't know everything. That may surprise you. you know. <laughs> but we do know that this is what He wants us to do. And, and to walk in that is excitement. I, I discord, To walk in obedience to the direction that you believe God's leading you in, there is excitement and joy in that. When I don't have to bow up and say, i got to depersonalize and declutter? You mean you don't like my stuff? No. The new buyer just wants to be able to see what their stuff would look like in their new home, not what your stuff looks like in their potential new home. And so I've got, to, I've got to declutter and I've got to depersonalize that. I need to do that in my spiritual life as well. I need to seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness and all these things, all the stuff will be provided for me. So I've got to get the clutter out of the way so that I can focus on the Lord. I've got to depersonalize my life, realize that it's not about me, it is about Him. I've got to simplify. I've got to make a conscious choice to not be tied to the things of this world and to make the Lord and His kingdom a priority in my life. So Lord, what am I supposed to do with what I have in order to honor and glorify You? How can I make sure that what I have isn't owning me or telling me how to spend my time and my resources. Lord, help me to simplify, to declutter and refocus my life, that I would seek ye first. That's included in what we know of as the Sermon on the Mount. There's another portion of Scripture in the Sermon on the Mount that is Matthew chapter 5, verses 14 through 16, where he says, you are the salt of the earth. But if the salt loses its saltiness or its taste, how can it be made salty again? It's no longer good for anything but to be thrown out and trampled under people's feet. He goes on to say, you're the light of the world. A city situated on a hill cannot be hidden. No one lights a lamp and puts it under a basket, but rather they put it on a lampstand so that it gives light to all that are in the house. In the same way, would you live in such a way that your life is so hectic and so cluttered and so busy? No. It says that you would live in such a way that you would let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and glorify your Father that's in heaven. He says in Acts chapter 1, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in Judea and Samaria and to the ends of of the earth. He says in Matthew chapter 28, verses 18 through 20, or 19 and 20, Jesus came near and he said to them, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe everything that I have commanded you, and remember, I am with you always to the very end of the age. Those scriptures, Matthew 22, when Jesus is asked, what's the greatest commandment of all? And Jesus answers that you ought to love your stuff more than anything else. No. You ought to love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. And you didn't ask for it, but the second one is much like it. It says that you would love your neighbor as yourself. Jesus giving us what we need to, to remember and to be able to when we start this process of simplifying and decluttering our life from all the busyness as we, if you will from earlier, if we'll clear our minds so that God can speak to us, if we'll simplify things and declutter what's going on, what is it that God wants us to focus on? He wants us to focus on 
making disciples that make disciples. He wants us to focus on living a life that would be salt and light to the people around us. That we would be witnesses for Him in our hometown to the ends of the earth. That we would be these people like the new believers in Acts chapter 2. That we would devote ourselves to the teaching of the apostles. That we would devote ourselves to the fellowship. That we would devote ourselves to the breaking of bread. That we would devote ourselves to prayer. That we would get to the place that we have all things in common. And that when somebody has a need, we're jumping at the opportunity to meet that need. We would become the hands and feet of Jesus in the world in which we live. But in order for us to do those things, for us to to do that, we must simplify. We must declutter and refocus. That's my definition of simplify, that we would declutter and refocus. Because we're here, not just to acquire stuff, not just to be a blip On the radar screen, we studied in our Sunday school lesson this morning the the fact that that we are here for just a, a moment in time, but God's got plans beyond that time. Moses came and led the people, but there came a point in time when Moses was going to die. But God's promise for His people didn't die with Moses. It continued. His promise was for the people. And so He rose up another leader, and He appointed had Moses appoint another person, Joshua, that would take his place and lead them for the next season. And then the truth is, is there would be others that would come after them to continue to lead because God's business is bigger than any one person and any one leader. He's got things to be done. And so we have to realize that we're here to fulfill that commission, to live out the great commandment, that we're here to be the hands and feet of Jesus. So how do we declutter? How do we refocus? How do we peel back all of that stuff? Three words. Prayer. The Word prayer and the word I can't even begin to tell you how many times over the last six months in the process of our family journey and God's personal journey in my spiritual life how often the focus and the word prayer has come up And how vitally important it is to the simplifying of our lives. To being able to fulfill what it is God's called us to do. This morning, I meet with a group of guys every Sunday morning. And and we pray before the service, before anything gets started here at the church. You're welcome to come join us 8 o'clock, 8.15, Sunday mornings. We're here. Probably been doing that for about seven or eight years. I mean, it's been going on for a while. But even in that, the question was asked this morning, based on things that this person had been hearing in their listening and studying and what have you, of growing in the Lord. I need to get specific. So what's one thing you'd like to see happen before we leave church today? So we all answered, and that became our prayer time. So, And then one of the guys teaches Sunday school and says, well, my lesson today is on prayer. God's just continuing to confirm that where, where I need to be and where we as a church need to be in this simplifying process centers around prayer. Because I could take you back through magazine articles, books. I can't pick up a book that it doesn't talk about prayer. Turn every worry into a prayer. That was point number one last week's message. 
can't listen without prayer becoming something that is so vitally important to the life breath of the believer and the church. And yet something that is so absent in the believer and the church. Hmm. Man, the list, I could just... Every day I get an email. Pray for every home. I get five neighbors every day. Some of y'all started that some time back with me. That's been three or four year ago type thing. I continue today to get an email with five names of my neighborhood to pray over. In a conversation with a guy at a marriage deal that we were helping promote and stuff, talking to a guy, and he says, my mom and dad live in your neighborhood. And I said, oh, what's their name? He said, well, so he told me, and I said, well, I pray for my neighbors every month. My hundred closest neighbors, I pray for them every month. And I said, so I want their name so I know that when I get to them, that's, that's who it is. Well, their name hadn't updated yet. It was still the old resident owner of the house. But now I know the address, and I know who's actually living there. And I can pray for that mom and dad, that husband and wife. But I get to do that. So prayer, I just... I'm reading a book right now, Jim Cimbala's book, Fresh Wind, Fresh Fire. It's an old book, but it's a fresh wind and a fresh fire for me. It's just stirring in my heart this need for us, for me, that will eventually spill over and to become us, that we would be a church that simplifies to the point that prayer becomes a priority. I shared with the Wednesday night group, I would, I, I would just urge you to make an effort to come be a part of Wednesday night Bible study prayer service at First Baptist Church Glenpool. There are going to be some incredible things happen in the life of this church. They're going to come in part as a result of the time of that group 12, 15, 20, 30, whatever it may be, 12 of us right now on average coming. And the prayer focus of that group as we're creating a list of folks that need Jesus as Savior and Lord, as we're praying over health needs, as we're praying over the businesses represented in the life of our church, praying for you, as we're praying for the families in our church, as we, as we will focus in and, and make that we, we, we can't make it anything, but we will focus our time on studying God's Word and praying unto the Lord of the harvest. You ought to come be a part of that and, and get help that be what all that God wants it to be. So, so much. Let me, let me quickly, I hadn't even gotten to the Scripture for the day, haven't preached in two weeks, so y'all are in for it, right? No. There's a passage of Scripture, and, and I'll... Mark chapter 11, verses 15 through 17. Jesus and His disciples, they make their way into the temple. And what Jesus sees stirs Him to one of the most um, visible outbursts of activity that we, that we ever see of Him in his public ministry. He, he walks into the temple courts and the scripture says he just begins to go, Jason's words, crazy. He's turning over the, ta the tables that are in there. He is wiping open the cages of the, where the doves are and the animals are. He is just looking at this and says, you guys have taken what the word says, this is to be a house of prayer and you have turned it into a den of thieves. Jesus comes in, if you will, and declutters the temple. Now he makes a mess, right? But in the making of a mess, he allows them to see through the stuff and to realize what the focus of that place is to be. Now don't get me... Don't, don't get... These folks were doing good things. 
but they were doing good things that had gone wrong. Because there were some that were in that temple court and they were, they were selling sacrifice, sacrificial animals. People would travel. They wouldn't come with the animal, but they would bring money. And so they would sell them the appropriate animal that they needed for the sacrifice that they needed to offer. Nothing wrong with that. That's a good thing. It allowed people to be obedient to the custom and the law. But it had gone bad because they were charging them crazy amounts four dollar doves were going for four hundred dollars i'm just throwing numbers out i don't know what they were selling but that's the idea all right it's like buying a gallon of gasoline in oklahoma and then going to nevada and buying a gallon of gasoline two dollars here four dollars there i mean that's what we experienced in our vacation so it's just they, they a good thing gone bad there were also money changers, the Jewish money. And so they were there. When these Gentiles would come in, now they would have to exchange their Gentile money for Jewish currency or whatever currency to the proper currency. And they were charging these huge rates in order to do that. So they'd turn in two Gentile dollars and they'd get 50 cents worth of Jewish money instead of it being whatever it should have been. Crazy to that degree so they were getting hit there and then they went to go buy the the proper sacrifice animal and they were getting hit again there so these folks had taken something that was good something that was needed because of the the, the lay of the land and the and the custom of the day and they'd made it a bad thing there were also folks he says that were just traveling through the temple courts to get through town and that's not a bad thing i meant find the nearest route right and get there but as they were going through, they forgot and missed the fact that they were walking through the temple. And the temple was a place in which people came to encounter God. And in their cluttering, and in all that was going on in the busyness, they forgot why they were there. Or what was to be accomplished there. You and I personally and spiritually would God be telling us we need to simplify that we need to declutter so that we can refocus this is to be a place of prayer this is to be a place of power this is to be a place of peace this is to be a place in which we encounter the living God not so much the building as much as when God's people the church get together so God's stirring in my heart physically personally you've heard a little bit of that but spiritually is that prayer would become paramount and center in that journey. And the Word, right there with it. Because when I'm not sure what to pray, I pray the Word. Gary said, if you have a worry, just put the word Jesus in front of it and it becomes a prayer. You're not sure what to say. Just open the book and begin to read it. Pray the word. Seek God's direction for our lives. So, would you, would you maybe come today and ask the Lord to stir in you a desire to declutter and refocus? Would you do that? You come here every Sunday and look at a word. Don't even re realize that you look at it. But it's there. I've done the same thing. But God's rekindling that word and giving it a fresh look for me. That I believe is a fresh look that we need to have individually and then corporately as a church as well. What in our lives? That's not telling everybody they need to sell their houses. That's not. You look at your life. You talk 
to the Lord. You get direction from Him, and what does it mean for you personally, physically? And then ask Him what it looks like spiritually in your life. Would you ask for a fresh stirring? Lord, help me to declutter so I can refocus on you. Would you birth within me a desire to grow in my walk in relationship with you, that I might make a difference for your kingdom, that I might be the salt and light to a world that needs it, that I might be a great commission, great commandment Christian, that I might be a faithful witness everywhere I go. Maybe you need to come and say, I've been trying to get through all this stuff that's going on in my life alone, doing it my way. But today I want to come and surrender to the Lord. I want to realize that I can't do it, that I need a Savior. And I've never asked Him to forgive me of my sins and to come into my life, but today I want to do that. I can never be the salt and light for him with all this that you've talked about. I can't do that. I need his help to declutter and refocus my life, and I want that today. And you'd come and enter a relationship with him. I believe with all of my heart, God wants you to do one of those two things. He either wants you as a lost person to come and to become a part of his family today, or he wants you as a Christian to ask him for a fresh stirring of His Spirit in your life. And that you would simplify, you would declutter and refocus on Him. So as you stand, what will your response to Him be today? Father in Heaven, Lord, I thank You for Your Word. Father, I thank You for Your work in our lives. Father, as we come to this moment and this time, would You help us to respond to your Holy Spirit's work in our life today. Whatever it is that we need to do, help us, Father, to be obedient to you. Use these moments. Glorify yourself. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Mm -hmm.